All right, guys, welcome to section 8.2, reciprocal function families. And today we're going to spend time graphing uh, these reciprocal functions. It's important to realize that the general form of a reciprocal function is y equals a over x minus h plus k. It's also important to note that x cannot equal h. Now, h and k play an important role with our asymptotes. The vertical asymptote is going to occur at x equals h. The horizontal asymptote is going to occur at y equals k. Okay? The general graph of these types of functions is shown below. These red graphs, when we connect the points for this function, are called branches. So what we're going to do is we're going to look at two examples where h and k are 0. And then we're going to look at two examples where h and k are real numbers. It's important to realize that when h and k are both zero, when they're not shown, the vertical and horizontal asymptotes are at x equals zero and y equals zero. Now, here's our first example. Graph the function y equals 2 over x. Now, when we look at this, we can see that this should look like inverse variation from section 8.1. And it is. So the first thing you want to do is you can create a table of values or you can identify your asymptotes. Either order is fine. I chose to make the table first. When I look at this graph, I see that a is equal to 2. So I want to be careful and I want to choose multiples of 2. Now, I can use any x value except for x equals 0. That would make the function undefined. But I'm going to be picky here. I'm going to use multiples of 2 because then when I simplify the fraction, it's going to be easier to do. So I picked x values of 1 half, 1, 1, or excuse me, 1 half, 1, 2, 4, negative 1, negative 2, and negative 4. I plug each of these x values into my original graph or my original equation. If I plug 1 half in for x, I get 2 divided by 1 half, which is the same thing as 2 times 2, and that's when we get 4. 2 divided by 1 is 2. 2 divided by 2 is 1. And you can see those points here in the first quadrant. 1 half is 4. 1 is 2. And 2 is 1. And then I connect those points following what my asymptotes would be. Remember, h and k are 0. So both asymptotes are going to be x equals 0 and y equals 0. You don't see the lines here because the asymptotes are actually the axes. So that's why when I see those three points, I don't cross over. I follow both asymptotes here. Now, when I plug in negative 1, negative 2, and negative 4, I get the following y values. 2 divided by negative 1 is negative 2. 2 divided by negative 2 is negative 1. And 2 divided by negative 4 is negative 1 half. And I see those three points here. And again, follow your asymptotes. That's very important when you graph these. Follow your asymptotes. Now, because x and y are both 0, I do have restrictions on my domain and range. I can't just use anything. So let's look at what the domain and range are. Recall that x can't be 0. So that means I can go from negative infinity to 0, but I can't include that. And that's going to be in union with 0 to infinity. This domain tells me that I can use all values except 0. And that should make sense. Because if x is 0, that function is undefined. When I look at my y values, my range, okay, looking vertically, I go from negative infinity and I get really close to zero and stop, and then you can see above zero to infinity. So I go from negative infinity to zero in union with zero to infinity. In example two, we're going to graph the same type of function, but our a value is negative. Okay, so again, I'm going to create a table of values. I don't see an h and I don't see a k. So I know my asymptotes are going to be x equals 0 for the vertical and y equals 0 for the horizontal asymptote. Now, again, I create a table of values. In this case, I probably want to do multiples of 6, or excuse me, multiples of 3. I'm going to start with negative 6. I have negative 3 and negative 1. And then I choose 1, 3, and 6. Those are easy values I can get either good fractions 
or you know uh, whole numbers. So if I plug in negative 6, I get negative 3 over negative 6, which is positive 1 half. Negative 3 divided by itself is 1. Three di negative 3 divided by negative 1 is 3. And so I plot those points. I have negative 6 and 1 half, negative 3 and 1, 1, or excuse me, negative 1 and 3. And I follow my asymptotes when I draw my branch. Same thing with 1, 3, and 6. I just get negative values here. If I plug in 1, okay, I get negative 3. If I plug in 3, I get negative 1, and 6 gives me negative 1 half, and I follow my asymptotes. Again, with the domain restrictions, x can't be 0, so it's the same domain as our last example, negative infinity to 0 in union with 0 to infinity. Range is also the same from negative infinity to 0 in union with 0 to infinity. Example 3 is where we're going to change and have h and k now. So as you can see, we're still plotting a function, or a rational uh, function family member, and we have x plus 1, and that's being subtracted by 2. So we have an h and k. So let's identify those first. If x is negative 1, we have a vertical asymptote. If k, since k is negative 2, our horizontal asymptote is at negative 2. So the first thing you can do is draw those in. So at x equals negative 1, we see a vertical line. At y equals negative 2, we see a horizontal dotted line. So I've established my asymptotes. And now again, I'm going to create a table of values. However, now when I pick my table of values, I am going to think about picking values to the left and to the right of the vertical asymptote. So that's what I've done here. My vertical asymptote's at negative 1, so I pick 0 and 1. And then I also pick negative 2 and negative 3, because those are to the left of the vertical asymptote. It's important to remember that when you pick your x's, you don't need to choose 10 points. Usually two on either side of the vertical asymptote is sufficient enough to be able to sketch a graph. Now, when I plug 0 in for x, I get 1 minus 2, which is negative 1. When I plug in 1 for x, I get 1 half minus 2, which is negative 1.5. So I get 0 and negative 1, 1, and negative one and a half. So there are my two points, and I follow the asymptote. I plug negative two and negative three in for x, and I get negative three when x is negative two, and when I plug in negative three for x, I get a y value of negative two and a half, which are here and here. So negative two and negative three, three, excuse me, negative 3 and negative 2.5, and again, I follow my asymptotes. With the domain restrictions, I see that x can't be negative 1, so I can use everything but that value, so from negative infinity to negative 1, in union with negative 1 to infinity. And remember, the parentheses mean I can't include negative 1. The range? Well, our y value is negative 2. That's the one, that's our k value. So, our horizontal asymptote is negative 2. We can't use negative, we can't have an output that's negative 2. So our range goes from negative infinity to negative 2 in union with negative 2 to infinity. Now, our final example is graphing another function and we have an x value, or an h value, minus 3, and a, a k value of 4. So the asymptotes are at 3 and 4, which is what we see here in red. x is 3, so my vertical asymptote is 3. y equals 4 is my horizontal asymptote. So again, I pick x values to the right and to the left of the vertical asymptote. I'm going to choose 4 and 5 to the right, and 1 and 2 on the left. When I plug 4 and 5 in, if I plug 4 and I get 1 over 1, plus 4, and that's 5. When I plug 5, I get 
one half plus four, which is four and a half. So those are my two points. And again, follow my asymptote. When I plug two and one in to x, I get three and three and a half respectively. So two, you get three. And one, you get three and a half. And we follow the asymptotes. When looking at the domain and range, we know we can use all values of x except for 3, so there's my domain, negative infinity to 3 in union with 3 to infinity. My range, we can get really close to 4, but we're not going to hit an output of 4. So we go from negative infinity to 4 and 4 to infinity. So that's graphing uh, rational function families when you have an h and k value. We'll see you next time for section 8.3. Thanks, guys.